time to check in with some old familiar faces. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Heather stars, Where Are They Now? Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be checking in on the stars of the cult classic Heathers to see what they've been up to since the film was released in 1989. Hey, son, I didn't hear you come in. Hey, Dad. How was work today? Number 10, Lance Fenton, Kurt Kelly. Who's that guy in the cult think he is anyways? Bo Diddley? <laughs> Veronica's a new act, no doubt. Kurt Kelly may have only been a secondary character, but he was memorable. So we're checking in on the guy who brought him to life. Doesn't this cafeteria have a no fags allowed rule? One of Westerberg High School's dumbest and cruelest jocks, Kurt was played by Lance Fenton. Don't feel bad if that name doesn't ring any bells, as Fenton's career in the entertainment industry was short-lived. <laughs> he appeared in just one role after Heather's, a TV movie called The Fulfillment of Mary Gray, turning his back on Tinseltown to become a chiropractor. It's a career that, in all honesty, is a whole lot better than any Kurt Kelly would have landed had he not been killed. Now! Number 9. Glenn Shaddix, Father Ripper. And as she writes so eloquently in her suicide note, the way that life can suck! Glenn Shaddock's post-Heather's career reads like a what's what of iconic 90s television shows. Heather Duke underlined a lot of things in this copy of Moby Dick, but I believe the word Eskimo, underlined all by itself, is the key to understanding Heather's pain. The man behind Father Ripper, aka the priest who loved turning all of the Heathers and Jocks into martyrs during their funeral services, popped up in everything from Cheers and Seinfeld to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Caligula? As you call worse. Oh, Rockulus. Fetch these vixens some fig leaves. He also found considerable work as a voice actor, lending his unique voice to a slew of film and television productions, including 1993's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Sadly, Shaddix passed away in 2010. I need to go over them with you so we can get started. Number 8. Renee Estevez, Betty Finn. Thanks. Bye, Betty. The daughter of Martin Sheen and Janet Templeton, Renee Estevez was born into Hollywood royalty. I don't believe it, I'm winning. That, combined with a talent for both acting and writing, has led to a lengthy career in the entertainment industry. Despite this, her turn as the socially awkward Betty Finn remains one of her most beloved roles. Betty Finn, gosh. Hey, I'm really sorry I couldn't make it to your birthday party last month. It's okay. Your mom said you had a big date. I could probably miss my own birthday for a date. Since the late 80s, Estevez has had little trouble keeping herself busy, appearing alongside her brother Emilio in The War at Home, and serving as her father's fictional assistant Nancy on The West Wing. I have Matt Santos on the line. Thanks. Matt! As a writer, she penned four episodes of the FX series Anger Management, which starred her brother, Charlie Sheen. We just went out to teach you a lesson. So... This is over, right? Absolutely. Number seven, Patrick Laberto, Ram Sweeney. Let's kick his ass, shit, Ram. We're seniors, man. We're too old for that kind of crap. In the pantheon of stereotypical 80s jocks, Ram is up there with the best of them. Brilliantly brought to life by Patrick Laberto, or annoyingly, depending on who you ask, the character bullied and belittled the students of Westerberg High and paid the ultimate price. One. Two. Three. Ever since production on Heather's wrapped, Laberto has kept himself busy, appearing in dozens of films and TV shows, highlighted by a 208 episode stint on JAG as Lieutenant Bud Roberts Jr. He also appeared in the made-for-television flick The Last Sharknado, 
It's about time. As well as an episode of Scandal. Doug Warden? Yeah, that's me. What can I do you for? Maybe you want to start a college fund, secure a loan, maybe start planning for retirement? Number six, Phil Lewis, Dennis. We were wondering if you had any poems, uh, artwork that Heather did that we can put in the Heather Chandler yearbook spread. What? Heather's was actually actor and director Phil Lewis's first film role, and while his character wasn't exactly the most memorable, he nevertheless managed to parlay his appearance into a career that has lasted over three decades. His credits include films like City Slickers and Kicking and Screaming, as well as brief stints on TV shows such as Friends and How I Met Your Mother. Congratulations, you have been approved for a loan at 18%. No, what? That, that can't be right. You're lucky to be getting a mortgage. Of course, most people will recognize him for his work on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, in which he played neurotic hotel manager Marion Mosby. The role was a turning point in his career, and he has since worked on numerous Disney Channel productions. You know what, Mosby? I'm gonna throw you the best wedding ever! Well, thank you very much. Number 5. Lizanne Falk Heather McNamara. A former child model, Falk served as one third of the titular Heathers. Falk's Heather is considerably nicer and more sensitive than her friends, which ultimately leads her to attempting suicide in the second half of the film. What are you trying to do, kill me? What are you trying to do, sleep? Suicide is a private thing. Despite the high-profile nature of the role, as well as bit parts in Say Anything and Jim Jarmusch's Night on Earth, the actress ultimately chose to retire from the industry in 2002. Well, at least she'll always have the memory of playing croquet with Winona Ryder to look back on. Heather, your mother's here. Come on, whoever wants a ride. Number 4. Kim Walker, Heather Chandler. As the leader of the Heathers, Heather Chandler wielded untold amounts of power within the walls of Westerberg High School. Hello, Heather. Veronica, finally. I got a note of Kurt Kelly's. I need you to forge a hot and horny but realistically low-key note in Kurt's handwriting, and we'll slip it onto Martha Dumpchuck's lunch tray. Alas, it all came crashing down when JD tricked her into drinking drain cleaner. The role was one of Kim Walker's first, and it helped her secure more prominent work in films like Say Anything and television shows like The Outsiders. Unfortunately, her career never really took off, with the actress retiring in 2000. Tragically, she would pass away just one year later, having succumbed to a brain tumor at the age of 32. Number 3. Shannon Doherty, Heather Duke Oh, that was <laughs> Let's be honest, Heather Duke was clearly waiting for something terrible to befall Heather Chandler so that she could be in charge of the Heathers. Heather, why can't you just be a friend? Why are you such a mega bitch? Because I can be. Shannon Doherty's portrayal of the conniving and manipulative high schooler no doubt played a part in her landing the lead role of Brenda Walsh on Beverly Hills 90210. Michael Miller is Brandon's opponent. I know that, so what? So I hope you didn't tell him anything. The iconic 90s teen drama brought Doherty considerable fame, leading to a high-profile appearance in Mallrats and a starring role in the fantasy series Charmed. Doherty was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2015, but as of 2018, was still in remission. So I've already been humbled by cancer, but like it was hard and just this sense of rethinking sort of who you are and, and how you come to terms with who you are now. Number two, Christian Slater, Jason J.D. Dean. Greetings and salutations. You a Heather? No. I'm a Veronica. Christian Slater's turn as the gun-toting, heather-killing sociopath JD wound up being a turning point in the young actor's career. It wasn't long after that he attained leading man status, scoring roles in big-budget action flicks like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, 
cult classics like True Romance and Oscar-nominated flicks such as Interview with the Vampire. So, what do you do? I'm a vampire. <laughs> That's something I haven't heard before. A Hollywood mainstay for more than three decades, Slater picked up his first Golden Globe in 2016 for his performance as the titular character in the critically acclaimed series Mr. Robot, a show he also produces. Heathers may have put him on the map, but this talented actor was always destined for greatness. You don't take down a conglomerate by shooting them in the heart. That's the thing about conglomerates, they don't have hearts. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Want some pate? I'm telling you, girls, you have healthy hips. Put them to good use. <laughs> hmm. Flip it up, boys. <gasps> See? I told you. He's the real left crate thief. Number one. Winona Ryder, Veronica Sawyer. Your true feelings were too gross and icky for you to face. I did not want them dead. Winona Ryder's post-Heather's career has been filled with impressive ups and a few downs. She appeared in a number of high-profile roles throughout the 90s, including Edward Scissorhands, Girl Interrupted, The Age of Innocence, and Little Women with the last two earning her Academy Award nominations. You have me. With all of my heart. Then, shockingly, Ryder was arrested for shoplifting in 2001, and her career took a hit as a result. However, Winona Ryder is nothing if not resilient, and the actress has managed to right the ship with solid performances in 2010's Black Swan and the hit Netflix series Stranger Things. We can't wait to see what's next for this iconic Hollywood star. How, how do I find you? What should I do? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.